Okay guys, today I'm bringing you something a little different here. This is a 2016 Janus Halcyon that I picked up about seven months ago. Uh, so far I've put about a thousand miles over it on it uh, over those seven months. So I think I can actually uh, talk a little bit about it and say what I like and what I dislike about it. Uh, first thing you ought to know is that it is a hardtail, so that does factor in. If you're not used to a hardtail, it's interesting. Um, it's a completely different feel from having a properly set up rear suspension bike, so be prepared for that. Overall, it's not that too much different from any other motorcycle. It handles about the same. It has a 250cc single cylinder engine in it. It's actually a Lafon Honda clone. Um, I've got no problems with that. I understand it's a Chinese engine and all that, but that's what it is. They're trusted engines at this point. I've read up on them. Even before I was looking at this bike, I had read up on them and saw that they were considered decent engines. So I've got no qualms with that. Um, as far as the bike goes, I look at it. It's a, just a beautiful bike here. <laughs> It's got classic styling. I don't know of any other bike that has styling like this out there right now. I have had to do some work to it. Um, I had to replace the battery. Uh, it originally came with a lithium ferrous battery and that battery finally died. Um, so I needed to replace it. I couldn't find any other lithium ferrous batteries that fit in the battery box they had. So I had to call them up and talk to them. And they offered to send me a lead acid battery upgrade for the same price as the lithium ferrous battery I was going to have to buy. And I looked at that lead acid upgrade and looked at the battery box on it and saw that there were actually lead acid batteries I could buy myself that would fit in that box as well. So that was one of the things that got me to go with that over sticking with the lithium ferrous was being able to use the lead acid. But that was another thing that I had to replace now that I'm thinking about it. I replaced the performance air intake that came with it with the standard air intake. I did that because I was riding in the rain and it started bogging down because the performance air filter is just sat there out in the open where rain could fall on it, water could get in it, and it was just causing it to bog down with water. I didn't enjoy that, so I went ahead and I got the regular stock air filter to put back in it. I did that. I replaced the hairpin springs that were on it with coil springs. That's because the hairpin springs were dead. Um, let me tell you, riding with dead springs on a hardtail is not a good experience. Now that I've done it, and I've seen the difference. It's just incredible. It's like it's a completely different bike. <laughs> I cannot stress enough that Make sure your springs are working. If they're not working, you're in for a rough time. Uh, some things I don't like about it is uh, the speedometer. I wish the speedometer was angled up a little bit more. It's not level, but it's pretty close to level. And what happens is in the rain, once again the rain, water builds up on the bezel and obscures about the bottom third of the speedometer. That's not a big gripe, it's a fairly minor gripe in all things considered, but it is there and I do wish that the uh, speedometer was angled a bit more or maybe had something done to the bezel so that it could drain water and wouldn't hold it. Other things I don't particularly like would be, mm, well, it's real leather. I actually like the real leather, but it is real leather. That's extra um, work you have to put into it. It's not vinyl, it's real, real leather. And if it's not taken care of, it'll rot and just, just, just disintegrate. So you have to keep it oiled. That's one thing that has to be done on this. I have to go through, I have to oil all the leathers. That's not really a problem for me because I know that, I'm used to it, it's okay to take care of, 
it's not really that much trouble, but it is something you should consider if you're looking at this bike. You will have to oil the leather every now and then. Don't forget to do that. If you don't, your leather's going to rot and you're going to have a bad time. The bike gets about 80 to 90 miles to the tank, in my experience. Uh, it's a 1.5 gallon tank, so when you empty this tank out, filling it up is 1.5 gallons. But you're going 90 miles on that, so once again, I was driving the Grom around for quite a while when we had it, and that was about the same range that it had, was about 80 to 90 miles to the tank, so I was already used to having to stop fairly frequently to fill up, but that is something to consider as well. You're not going to be able to do a long extended trip on it, you've got to stop at least every 70 miles in my case. I like to stop at 70 just so I have that little bit of extra. If something goes wrong, I'm not stuck on the side of the road. The key here is a little finicky when you go to put on the fork lock. You're supposed to push the key down and then you're able to twist and get to the lock position. I found that I may have to move the handlebars, wiggle the handlebars around a little before it actually falls into the locked position. I don't know if that's on all of them or if it's just something that's gone wrong with this one where someone tried to break the fork lock. I don't know. All I know is that when I turn the forks like I'm supposed to and try to turn the key to the locked position, I have to wiggle the locks until it falls in just the right place and it actually works. Other things I've got are Occasionally the chain makes contact with the rear fender. I think that's just the chain slack when you're decelerating. Not a big deal. It hasn't eaten through the fender too badly yet. I'm going to keep an eye on that. I think some of it might also be that the chain was at some point not properly uh, tightened. So I don't know if that's actually happening while I'm riding it or if it's just old damage from when someone didn't keep the chain properly adjusted. It's been a great bike. Like I said, a thousand miles. I haven't had any major trouble with it, other than the things I've just spoken about, which are mostly just minor quibbles, some of them quality of life. Really, I, I do enjoy it. I do actually say, if you want to get to Janus, if you want a bike that looks like this, go for it. They're great bikes. I haven't had that much trouble with it. Uh, Norm I'm used to the idea of boutique generally means that you're going to have to put a lot of work into it. Uh, you get it, it's handmade. That means that there's problems with handmade, but I haven't seen any fitment issues per se. Uh, everything I've had has been just general wear and tear style stuff or personal preference. Like, I'm sure the previous owner didn't ride in the rain, so having an air filter out and exposed wasn't a problem for him, but I did. I had a problem. I wanted to fix it, so I did. I do recommend them. I think they're great bikes. I've had a lot of fun on this little guy. It gets attention everywhere it goes. Normally, people see the Urals drive by and they're all over those. I actually had a guy, we were at the Ingalls parking lot. I pulled up. We, with my parents, they had their girls. The guy comes over, points at the girl, says, I know what those are, but what's that? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just a great bike. I enjoy it. If you want one for yourself, you can look them up at janusmotorcycles.com or you can check out their YouTube page as well, which is just Janus Motorcycles. And if you do decide to buy one, let them know that uh, Robbie with uh, Halcyon number 32 sent you. Thanks for watching.